Hey guys, welcome to the video. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers and in this video, we're gonna launch a new video series. I'm on the quest to find the best security smart home camera system that can integrate into my smart home. I spent the last eight weeks with the Anki 4 megapixel NC400 PoE camera. My first goal is to cover my garage. So I wanna be able to see if my garage door is actually closed or open. I'm gonna show you images of the garage when the light is off, when the light is on, and also when I transition from basically dark to light whenever the garage door opens, which will probably be the most likely scenario that this will be useful for. Let's be honest, we don't think the bad guys are actually gonna turn on the lights before they actually get in your place, right? Full transparency, Anki has sent this over for me to review, but as always, all my opinions are my own. We'll be looking at build quality, camera quality, features, price, initial setup, and smart home integration. At the end of the video, I'm gonna give you the conclusions. I'm gonna let you know who this is actually for and who for this is not. If you're interested in this video series and you wanna see more, I'm gonna have these two cameras coming on my channel, Reolink and Akara. Then subscribe to the channel and wait for future video to come out. Now let's take a closer look at the box and what we've got inside. First thing we can find in the box, we've got the user manual. We've also got a sticker, 24 hour video surveillance sticker. We have a very useful drill template. This will actually ease installation and I'll talk about that more later. So we've got a few components here for the ethernet jack to keep it all weatherproof if you're mounting them outside. I won't be using them specifically in this video. We've got some wall plugs and screws. Now the build quality Anki is very solid. It's very solid, it's metal construction and it's also quite heavy. It also has its size, so it's gonna be quite noticeable. Here you can see a shot of the camera in my garage and you can see it gives out a lot of light. Actually, I have no light in the garage, so it is really good as a night light too. The camera gets mounted easily with uh, these three holes that you can see and there's a swiveling system where you can adjust and point it in the right direction. And yeah, that's quite easy to do and I can say it's quite solid. It feels like it's gonna stay there for a long time and you can put this also outside without a problem at all. Here are the three holes that you actually need to align with that drill template I showed you. And here are the two cables that you have the ethernet cable and the DC cable to connect power and data. This camera is suitable for indoors and outdoors. It's also IP67, so it's dust and water resistant. We've been running the camera now for at least two months and it's been working fine. So no issues with the build quality so far. But if I do have any issues, I'll leave a comment down here in the future. Now let's talk about the camera quality because the real key thing is, well, how does the footage look? How does it look when you actually need it and you actually need to recognize a face, recognize maybe some text? How does it all look? How does it perform in different light conditions? As I mentioned at the beginning, we'll be looking at my garage without light on, with light on, and then with the door open. So the specs are four megapixel, 2560 by 1440 at 20 frames per second. It's capable to record H.265. So what does that mean? That actually means that you can take footage and you can store it for longer because it will take less space up. Now let's jump into the footage and let's have a look at it. To give you a bit of context in terms of the measurements, my garage door is three meters by five meters. So that's like 10 feet by 17 feet. So this in this condition here, we've got a light on and it's daytime. So it should be the ideal conditions to actually see what's going on. So I've got this whiteboard here and I've got a writing on it. And as you can see, there's no chance that we can actually see that at all. So it's a green pen marker on a whiteboard and you can't see that at all. We could clearly see from my uh, sweatshirt what was written behind it. So that's okay. Uh, this little card has obviously got no chance at all. And let's look at the other one. We've got a, uh, a book and you can see me with the book. I'm coming closer and at that stage I can clearly see it. I think midway, so at two meters, I can start to see the read the book. That little card even closer around one meter, two meters. You can't really see that at all. Now, in terms of the field of view, if I actually too close to the door, you can't actually see me. So I might need to reposition this a little bit, but you can't really see if someone's coming in or out from the door. So let's jump into the next one. This time the light is going to be closed, but it's going to be pretty much the same time as you see from the timestamps. So you can see this is quite a nice sunny day outside from the sun coming from the garage door, but it is dark. It is completely dark and I've got some footage to actually prove that I'm going to put up on the screen now. So you can see here me with my mobile phone coming in with my smartphone. 
barely read the Gurun Ko. I can still read it. I think that's also fine. No chance again with the whiteboard. Not even really close. Yeah, the book, uh, I'm struggling to read that. I think there's a potential problem because there's a light coming from that garage door. And uh, so the camera has a reflection. It's not able to capture really, really well uh, faces. I can't see my face that well. So I wouldn't say the footage is that good. Um, there might be something that I've got wrong with the settings, but I've pretty much left it as it is out of the box to try it out. So I have a fair comparison when I try out with the other cameras. So my last camera test, I've got my car parked the inside and I'm going to open the garage door. This is going to simulate a potential uh, something that you guys want to protect yourselves from, for example, someone going and stealing your car. So this is during daytime, as you can see, very sunny day. The garage door is going up. You can barely see a wheel and a car there. You can see my legs, but you, you don't know that's me. Right up, I think here it's sort of quite clear that is me. I'm uh, getting very close to the car. I'm going farther away now to see, but there's no chance. You really can't see anything from the road. So the way this camera is set up probably isn't really friendly for daytime viewing, which is really important. I know we're focusing on nighttime viewing, but daytime viewing is, is quite essential because uh, things can happen also at daytime. If you're interested in transforming your own smart home, then I've got a link down in the description below that will take you to my smart home courses that I'm actually doing to help you achieve and create the home automation that's right for you. I have to say, for now, I'm not overly impressed with what I'm seeing in terms of the camera footage. I will try and change some of the settings to improve it a little bit, especially when opening that garage door and people are actually outside the garage door. Now let's talk about the features that this device offers. We have our RTSP streams and we have our ONBIF. These two things mean that we can actually use external software to integrate this camera with it. So I can use Home Assistant, my example, to connect into this device to read some of its data, some of its sensor, and also to trigger automations to record footage. Now that's been working really fine. I've got another video um, which I'm going to put over here. Now you can go check that out. And in that video, I use my doorbell as trigger for automations to record stuff that's happening in my garage door, which enables me to do like things like parcel deliveries. Price is around $120, and I'm going to leave a link down in the description below if you want to go ahead and buy this device. For the initial setup, you're going to need to use Internet Explorer as a browser. I tried to use Safari and let it work out quite well. Even Chrome doesn't work really well unless you add a plugin, which I'm not a fan of doing. I had to get and dig out Internet Explorer to get this up and running. You need to find out what IP address this actually lands on. So you need to be able to go to your router. So you need to know how to do that. If you're not really sure what I'm talking about, I've got some videos around networking, but really this device is not for you if you're not sure what IP addresses are and how to get to them. Anki offers an app called Anki Vision that you can download on your smartphone and you can use that to actually see the footage from your device and change some of the settings. If you want to, you can also sign up, but you're going to need to register and give out your email address. And for you to do that, then you can unblock additional features. That's not what I did because I was not interested in doing that because I wanted to use my smart home and integrate it into that. So as I said at the beginning, my goal was to integrate this into my smart home and I can see the camera footage from my smart home. I can see it's being reliable and it's also updating the stream so I can see the latest images by the second. I can also use these images. I can save an image and use that for notifications or I can use that to record the footage. So I'm quite happy with the integration with Home Assistant and I'm using the ONVIF, which is very simple to do. For you to set up the ONVIF with Anki, you're going to need to do the following. Type in the IP address of your Anki device in your browser, click login, go to advanced settings, and then integration protocol, you'll have this button over here, enable ONVIF. And over here you can add, you can create a username and a password. So you would do something like this, username and password, and you would confirm the password, set it at media user, click OK, and then click save. Once that's all done, then you can go in Home Assistant and you can get it all set up. So I'm in Home Assistant now, scroll down to configuration, go to integrations, and we'll go down and I've got the ONVIF over here. So if it, you haven't got this, you'll click on add integration and then you would type in ONVIF. You would click on it 
and then it will tell you if it supports the profile S you will go submit and then you will it will automatically actually find the device obviously I've already got it paired over here so I don't need to do this again once you have the device you can then use it in your dashboard so let me show you right now so as you can see over here you have live footage of the camera and you can see it updating with the current time and current day and this is integrated with my panel so I have my garage door I can turn it on turn it off I've got my weather I've got my front door so I've got all, everything that I need in one page so I don't need to jump between apps and that was the real reason why I wanted one of these devices the Anki NC400 seems to perform okay-ish in good conditions in good light conditions but I'm not too sure of how it's performing at night time especially with the scenario that I have with the garage door opening and you cannot even see the person that's outside your home so what I'm really really interested in looking at is how we can actually and how can actually improve so if you're watching this Anki let me know in the comments that description down below how can we actually change the configuration to make it work better for me so I'll make my final decision if I'm going to be keeping this or not in my smart home after I've actually gone through and reviewed the other products the next product I'll be reviewing is Reolink RLC 520A and I'll be setting this up and I'll be setting it up in the same position as the Anki and I'll be doing a comparison video between the two so I'm going to try to recreate the same conditions with the same footage and I'm going to see if this performs out of the box without doing any configuration better than the Anki I'll be quite interested in seeing this I've also got an Akari G2H little device and this isn't POE but I want to also use this and see if this is going to fit in my smart home too so if you're interested in those type of videos then like this video subscribe to the channel because more is coming. In the meantime, stay safe. I'll see you in the next video.